All right, so today we uh, picked up where we left off yesterday. Uh, we had just started talking about electronegativity and uh, we finished out with that trend. Um, so what I would direct you to is the end of the recap video from yesterday. Um, so if you look back in Teams, uh, yesterday's post, uh, the very end of that video talks about the trend for electronegativity and why it trends the way that it does. Today, what we want to do is to kind of summarize, look back at these four trends that you see here on the screen uh, that we discussed and see that really there's only two patterns, directionality patterns that apply here. And we want to kind of categorize the trends based on which uh, directionality trend applies to each one. Um, that way we can apply it to, if we have a series of elements, that we can identify which one's going to be the greatest, which one's going to be the least, et cetera. So you'll see that. And then there's some practice in class kit for you to take a look at. So atomic radius, if we think about where were the highest values, where were the largest atoms? Were they either in the uh, upper right corner of the periodic table or were they in the lower left corner of the periodic table? And if you recall from the trend in our discussion, we said that the lower you are on the table, the more electrons you've got and the more energy levels you need, the more levels you put on, the further out that distance of the valence shell from the nucleus is, so it's gonna be a larger radius. Within a row, you've got towards the left, you have fewer protons, so less attractive force, and therefore the electrons are gonna be able to be uh, a little bit further out. So atomic radius, the highest values are gonna be in the lower left. The next one, ionization energy is the energy required uh, for an atom to give up an electron. And so uh, if we think about that, the highest values are going to be for the atoms that have a tight grip on their electrons. And tighter grips are associated with smaller distances. So that would mean closer to the top of the table and also more protons, which would be further to the right on the table. And so ionization energy follows the trend of having its highest values in the upper right-hand corner. Metallic nature, again, what makes something as a, a metal is the fact that it would have a loose hold on its valence electrons. So again, we come back to this idea of the strength of the attractive force and metals aren't going to have a very strong attractive force uh, because that means they would have a loose hold on their electrons. That's what makes something a metal. So metallic nature tends to increase the further to the left and down we go on the table. Larger atoms, fewer protons um, within a given row. And so finally, electronegativity, uh, if we evaluate that in and of itself, the ability to attract electrons from another atom in a bond, again, it's that idea of attraction. So if you want the greatest amount of attraction, you want smaller distance and greater numbers of protons. Both of those would favor higher values in the upper right quadrant of the periodic table. So by remembering these two basic patterns, either your high values are going to be upper right corner or lower left corner, and which trend goes with which, when we get to questions like this, then we can say, okay, I'm looking for, I'm looking at the atomic radius trend. So that tells me that my highest values, I remember, are going to be in the lower left hand corner. Okay. So then I want to find my elements. All right, that I'm looking for here. And that is, I'm going to compare, I'm going to look at zinc, I'm going to look at scandium, and I'm going to look at bromine. Okay. And I know that the further to the left and down I go, the larger my atoms get. And that's in fact what I'm asked for. I'm asked for the largest radius. So that's telling me that of those three, I want the one that's furthest to the left and to the right. And in this case, that would be scandium. So that would be my choice. All right. First thing we want to do is, is focus on being able to identify which element, you know, satisfies the prompt or the question. But in the back of your mind, at the very least, you want to also be thinking, well, why is that? It's not just because it's the furthest to the left. That's just applying the pattern. The why is because of those three, it's got the weakest attractive forces because of the three, it's got the fewest number of protons. Okay, that, that's really the reason why. All right, highest ionization energy. Remember that your ionization energy trend had your highest values in the upper right corner. And so we are comparing cesium and potassium and lithium. 
And so if our highest values are in the upper right of those three, lithium, okay, is the highest one up. They're both in the same column, so there's no vert, you know, horizontal trend to worry about. So lithium would have the highest first ionization energy because it's got the smallest distance from its nucleus to its valence electrons, and it's got the strongest attractive forces. Most metallic, remember your most metallic elements are in the lower left corner. And so when we compare carbon to lead to silicon, okay, again, they're all in the same column, so there's no left-right trend to deal with. Uh, it's just the vertical trend. The further down we go, the more metallic your element is. And that is because the further down you are, the greater the distance, and therefore the weaker the attractive forces holding the electrons. Electronegativity, your high values were in the upper right-hand corner. And so when we compare fluorine to beryllium to oxygen, okay, the one that's furthest up and to the right uh, of those is fluorine. So now applying the same concept here, smallest radius, right? I'll give you a couple seconds to try this on your own. Feel free to pause if you like, and then I'll reveal the answer. Smallest radius out of copper, gold, and silver. I indicated where those three elements are at. So apply your uh, radius trend. And this time you're looking for the smallest one. Okay, so pay attention to which one's being asked for. If you're looking for the smallest one, that means you want the one that is closer to, that has fewer energy levels. And so that would be copper. Lowest first ionization energy. Here we're comparing manganese and strontium and sulfur. Okay, now notice they're not in the same column and they're not in the same row. So we do have to consider both trends, vertical and horizontal. I will not give you ones that will co purposefully contradict each other. Just saying, okay? So if you take a moment, took a moment here, um, when we talk ionization energy, remember your high values are in the upper right corner. So if we want the lowest ionization energy, that means that we need to look in the uh, lower left corner. And so that would be strontium. Lowest electronegativity between calcium, and barium and magnesium. For electronegativity, again, your high values are in the upper right-hand corner, fluorine being the highest. Remember, noble gases don't have electronegativity, most of them anyway, uh, because they're very non-reactive and they don't form bonds. So if we want the lowest electronegativity, we actually need the one that's furthest to the left and down, which would uh, put you at barium. Right. So now if we go over to class kick, okay, when you log into class kick and you scroll down, there should be a, an activity periodic trends practice. You click into that and you're going to have four pages. Okay. All total. Each page is going to focus on a different uh, trend. So the first page is atomic radius. The second one's metallic nature, then ionization energy. I'm sorry, electronegativity, then ionization energy. And on each of those pages, you've got four questions, okay, giving you a set of elements, and you're asked either for the largest or the smallest value, so pay attention to that. The bottom of the table or the bottom of the page, you also have a periodic table for your reference. So you can type in your answer for which element you feel best matches that or answers that question, and when you click off of it, you will get an instantaneous uh, check on whether you were correct or not. So yes, you could just do process of elimination to get the green check, but that's not really the point here. The point is being able to apply the trends and, and determine what's either the largest or the smallest value, because ultimately that's what you're gonna to need to do in your assessment later this week. And you won't have the self-check feature uh, to kind of back you up and help you with the process of elimination. So give that a shot. Tomorrow, bring your questions and we will review for your assessment, which will be later this week. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.